are thrilled to welcome to the show award-winning Canadian recording artist Jordan, who has had gold-selling singles like You Can Have It All and Like Magic. He's back with a brand new single, also a refreshed sound, and we're super excited to speak to him. Jordan, thanks so much for hanging out with us on the show. Thanks for having me, Kelly. So I have to bring you back to the beginning. How did your music career start, and what would you consider your first big break that opened doors for you? Music career started, um, I'd say... When I moved back to Halifax from Toronto when I was about 11 years old and my brother, he had a CD collection and he uh, he had this job working at Pizza Hut and he used to go to work and he was like, don't touch my CD. So I found uh, Tevin, uh, uh, Tender Love by Babyface, his first album, Babyface's first album. And I learned the song Sunshine and I fell in love with singing. So that's where it really kind of you know, hit me. And I was like, you know what, this feels good. I want to try this one day. But that's it, I, it, it stops there because I didn't pursue doing music until years later because I fell in love with the game of basketball. But that's where I first got the bug. That's where the seed was planted. Uh, Babyface Tender Love. Amazing. And who else uh, influenced you musically? Like what what artists and do they still play a part in influencing you today? Um, Tina Turner, um, James Brown, Michael Jackson. Um, who else? We've got like Usher, there's Alicia Keys, there's uh, Jodeci, there's like the R&B guys from the 90s that were that were amazing, you know, guys like Joe, uh, Silk, and there's a ton of, there's a ton of, ton of artists. But this is why we, this is why we get along, because (laughs) I'm a huge Janet Jackson fan and a big R&B fan from the 90s, so this is, this is good. But as far as that question you asked about um, the first break that I had was actually the first song that I ever recorded. Uh, it was called Love Song, and I freestyle recorded it with uh, my buddy Trovis. Um, and about two months later, uh, Alexander Keys p- uh, picked it up, and they gave it away on this East Coast CD compilation in every two four of beer. So that was like my biggest, you know, thing to happen to my career then. And I thought it was awesome that people all around Nova Scotia were bu- bu- buying a two, f- two, four beer and getting, getting one of my songs. So that was my biggest, my first big break. And then I was like, you know what? I like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, was your family always supportive of, of this career? 100%. My, um, my dad at first was, you know, he didn't want to let go to the NBA dream. Uh, but he was like, you know what? Go ahead. Just, just do it. Take your time and get, you know, get it done. If you love it, do it, son. So. But yeah, they were definitely, they've always been supportive of anything that I've done. It's mainly been the two passions have been basketball and music. And yeah. So. And did you find that you had to like, you know, um, like leave the East Coast to get more success or were you happy to kind of still call that home base? Um, You know what? That's a good question because it comes up quite often, but it's it's hard to answer completely because when the right before I left home, I had some um, national success at radio. You know, I was getting a ton of shows. I was I was pretty active working, but then I signed a new production deal with uh, Kuya Productions in Toronto. So for the first year of that deal, I was commuting back and forth, and it just be- became expensive. So you know, making the trip to make Toronto my base, which is also home for me because I've lived half my life in Toronto and half my life in Nova Scotia. But it was it was definitely important, and it definitely helped my career a lot because being in the city around the movers and shakers, it's easier to have access to bigger studios. You know, there could be a songwriting camp here or some producer that's in from LA or something. I can get in with them and write a record, you know, as far as, you know, producers and people coming out that far East, you know, it wouldn't happen as much. And of course I have friends and producers out there like classified who I work with a lot and that have made great careers, you know, make great names for themselves by staying at home. But for me, it was just a little different and, you know, I'm still here in Toronto. So I love it. Did you ever feel the call to go to Los Angeles? Yeah, 100 percent. That's always like, you know, that, you know, the Hollywood dream and, and leaving and going. And I've gone, but it's always been, you know, I've had uh, label deals already in Canada situated. And so I was going out there and it was always for work where it was like I should shoot a video or I had a week long songwriting camp. But I've never gone and like got to network the way I wanted to. So definitely that's in the uh, of the new year. That's plans for the new year is, you know, you know, getting back on radio and and, um, you know, taking taking some things slowly in Canada, then making that that jump to the U.S. market and the U.K. market and try to see if we can uh, make some noise and some waves over there in those different different markets. <laughs> what was the first song that you uh, heard on the radio of yours and 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 where were you? How did it feel? Uh, it was amazing. It was feeling fine, featuring classified and Jay Busy. And uh, I was 
I remember the street I was at Lucknow. I was in uh, my girlfriend's apartment and I knew the song had been out on radio. So I just I got, got there one day and I was just like, you know what, I'm alone. Let me just turn the song on the radio, see if it comes on. And I was alone. So I, I, I screamed, I screamed like a baby, <laughs> but it was like, ah, my song's on. But I remember being super excited. I'll never forget that so first time. And it's the first song I've ever had on radio as well. So it was really, really awesome. And, you know, to, to be able to hear yourself, you know, after, you know, listening to the song probably for a thousand times before anybody else heard it and then hear it on the radio when everyone else is here, it's exciting. It's always exciting. It never gets old when you, when you hear yourself on the radio. Now, when you can have it all started making noise, because that's the song that, like, I think I knew you first from, um, were you surprised at the success of that song or did you have a feeling when you were working on it that it was going to go um no i had a feeling uh we we kind of made some trips to some radio stations and i had a feeling because everybody i played it for was really like this is something catchy this is great so i had a good feeling i was just a little like you know worried at first because i i wrote the song for someone else and i didn't want to get the, the you know the audience confused but um no I, I everyone seemed to be pretty confident on the label and everyone so you know, as soon as we took it into certain stations and they were like, man, this is awesome. We love it. I was like, oh, this is going to be great because I've already had a little bit of success at radio with some of the earlier stuff. So just to feel the excitement from all the different radio stations was cool. So definitely it feels like at that time you were like everywhere. Were you able to enjoy the success or was it like just a roller coaster ride? Oh, no, definitely. I definitely got to. I mean, the enjoying the, the, the enjoyment part for me was staying busy. You know, and that was like, you know, being able to, okay, I have another show in a week. All right, great. You know, that's the enjoyment. And that is the success for me, you know, is to be, to, to, to remain busy. Every artist wants to be on the road. Every artist wants to be on stage. So that was enjoying the success for me. Definitely. Amazing. And, um, you know, when the album came out and it started to do well, obviously with those two singles going gold selling for you, uh, how did that feel to have like two singles go like selling gold? That's amazing. It was awesome. I mean, you know, it's a little different from numbers in the States and here, but it's definitely an accomplishment. And at that time I was, I had some friends that like, cause I was like, you know, new artists, not so, so new, but like new to the success of like the, you know, the, it's the, the national success and, and, and being invited to award shows and being nominated. So I was, you know, at first I was like, I want more, I want more. And I had some friends humble me real quick and be like, man, you, you better appreciate what you just did because not a lot of artists, especially even black artists have had that opportunity at that time to have, you know, a gold selling record in the country. So for me, I, I, I quickly turned, uh, changed my tone and, and was very grateful. And, um, you know, we're, we're back to try to do it again, Kelly. Uh, this is what we want. This <laughs> is what we want. Now, um, you know, as far as I know, like, you know, I haven't heard some of your newer stuff on the radio in a while. So did you take a break for a while? And, 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 and what was the reasoning to, to come back with this kind of refreshed sound? Yeah, um, well, I had a daughter. I definitely took a break. Um, I didn't take a break in recording, but I was, um, like I said, I had different contracts that I was trying to get out of at the time. So at the same the same year at the time, uh, streaming, the streaming platforms became a thing. I wasn't putting out any music. So I missed like almost three years of that wave of streaming and everybody doing streams because I was trying to get out of a contract that I didn't want the, um, the company to own the rights to my, my new music. So I had to wait about two and a half years to, to, you know, legally get out of that contract. So I guess you could say I kind of took a break, but I still recorded a ton of music. And then right after I was able to get out of that contract, I started releasing stuff. So around 2018, I started releasing music and coming back into the, into the scene a bit. And did you find like, cause I know that, you know, there's like the, the list is long of artists who end up in contracts that they don't want to be in and that's not working out for them. Um, what advice would you have to an up and coming artist about signing said contracts? Uh, I would say uh, make sure you have a lawyer read over the contract and then have a lawyer read over the contract after that lawyer reads over it. And, you know, after you get a red line from one lawyer, go to another lawyer and just take your time and just try to learn a little bit about the business side of things and understand what these keywords mean and what, you know, the, 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 the fine print is saying to you before you go ahead and sign it. You know, I, I was uh, younger and excited to that a label was interested in me. So I, I just went ahead and signed, you know, and, um, you know, it was, it, it worked out, you know, it's just uh, the sunset clause of getting out wasn't the thing that I had did read the fine print on, but it worked out and we, we had some great success and, 
I wouldn't change it for the world, but I'm, you know, I'm just grateful that now I have this opportunity to come back with a new label, you know, with a new team, new management and, and do this all again. Talk to us about the new single. Uh, what do I got to do? Tell me how the song came about, uh, the vibe you were going for and uh, what you want the fans to take away from it. Yeah. Uh, what do I got to do? So Jensen Vaughn, who is an amazing songwriter from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, he's, been tearing up the airwaves as a songwriter. You, you've probably heard uh, one of his big ones. This is what it feels like. Trevor Guthrie, he wrote that one as well. So he's a buddy of mine from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. So he used to live in Toronto. So we just, we, we've been writing, collaborating for, for years, you know, since 2011. And every time he moved back home recently, the last couple of years. So every time I go home, I let him know I'm home. And then he'll be like, all right, come by. There's a producer in town. You know, he always has producers flying into Nova Scotia and just uh, treating them with that beautiful ocean we got out there. So he always, every time he has a dope producer come into, into town, he, he'll hit me up to see if I'm there. And I just so happened to be there when Joel Stouffer was there, who was a, a member of Dragonette, big producer with Dragonette. And um, I went in and, you know, we started writing the record and it was just, you know, we were kind of not thinking about me at first. Once again, we were thinking about um, actually The weekend, and we started to produce it like with vibes that would cater to his sound, I guess, with I Can't Feel My Face. And then it, we kind of went into like, felt more disco so we just kept going with it and and once like about a, about a year went by we're like oh this is just collecting dust and this is a great song i brought it to this new team they loved it and they wanted to go full force with it so we went into sony and re-recorded it got a new situation over at sony orchard in the u.s and yeah we're here now we're talking about it and definitely um the team as you can see kelly the hair is heron <laughs> and uh, the team was like, let's just, you know, play off of the, the, the vibe of your look and, you know, kind of do some soul R&B disco pop vibes. So that's kind of where the direction is going now. So is uh, a new album on the way for us? 100 percent. We're going to get one in the fall for sure. And talk about sequencing that album, because I know that, you know, so many people just release singles these days and don't do an album. And I want to know what your thoughts on that is and also how you're going to sequence the album. Are you going to tell a story? Yeah, this time around, you know what? Um, I normally try to tell a story. I did that with my Ralph, my Ralph project that I put out um, a few a few years back, and you know, I just kind of like let the fans in on you know a little bit more of my personal life when it comes down to my family. I have my family do like you know little interludes on it. My daughter has an interlude on interlude on it, and you know, I kind of let the fans into uh, my life that way. But this time around, I think you know, and that was like. I re finished recording that during the pandemic. So people were just kind of like in serious mode. So, but now I'm just, you know, I'm trying to cater to the, to the, uh, the vibe and the energy of, of the world right now. It seems like everybody is dancing. Everybody's outside enjoying themselves. They're at festivals and concerts. So I'm going to just cater it to that, to that sound and, and try to match the look as well with the, with the disco. So I'm, I, I think this time, Kelly, I'm just going to direct it strictly to that you know i always you know like doing r&b slower records but we're doing some disco r&b pop you might get like a a slower disco like a soul disco sound so, you know maybe like you know back to earth wind and fire day something like that you know what i mean so we're gonna definitely stick in in, in in one one direction very cool and now um you know you've probably heard obviously amanda marshall recently came back after her break which I think also had to do with contract issues and stuff like that. And she's just wrapping up a very successful, you know, run of tour dates right across the country. Will you do that for us too, going across the country? Planning it. We're, we're hoping to get that underway before the year's out. Um, and definitely, you know, uh, once we get some traction and get things going with this new, new single, and I'm getting some great feedback. We've sat with some, you know, with some programmers, sat with some hosts and talking to you now. So Hopefully, you know, this one uh, will do some great things and we'll be able to hit the road and, and uh, all around the country for sure. And what are you manifesting for yourself for the, over the next six months to a year? Next six months to a year, uh, manifesting, getting in, getting to L.A., getting to the States and establishing a working relationship with that, I guess, with that geography, that geographic, you know, meet, meeting some new people, creating new fans down there and be able to, you know, perform down there and possibly tour the U.S. as well. That's what I'm manifesting. I want to get out and tour some other parts of the world, maybe starting with the U.S. or the U.K. What um, top 10 producer, or I should say top 40 producer, would you like to work with from the States right now? Pharrell. Pharrell. He's the guy, the number one guy for me. He's, um, and, you know, he makes music that kind of fits this, this kind of vibe that I'm doing too. So definitely Pharrell. I've been a huge fan of everything he's done over the years. And, um, Mainly, I saw this one interview uh, after he won like a 
Rick Award or something like that. And he was uh, he was like hurt about Michael Jackson not singing one of his songs. And I, th I still think he is because he still brings it up. He's like, damn. He gave, but he gave most of those uh, songs to Al uh, to Justin Timberlake on the Justified album. Mm -hmm. about that Justin Timberlake talks about that. But yeah, he since then I'm like, yo, I gotta get one of those songs from Pharrell. Like, let me hold one of those. I know you got one in the vault somewhere. But him definitely Pharrell would love to work with Pharrell. If you were in a, a super group, who would be the other two members? Ooh. Super group, other two members would be Nas and Alicia Keys. That's solid. Yeah. Is there a, a household chore you actually like doing? Yeah, I don't mind doing the dishes. Uh, that's I, I mean, in my, I mean, I'm getting older now. I'm, I'm, my mom and dad. I was lucky when I was when I was playing sports because they they understood the the time and effort and and um, you know dedication into playing a sport. So my my pops would always be like, no, no, go ahead, you got to practice. Go ahead, I'll do this. My mom, same thing. So, but as I got older, I I, I learned to really appreciate that. When I moved to France and played professionally over there, I was like. Oh man, I, I'm never gonna let my parents do this stuff again for me because, you know, you, you, when you do it for yourself, you, you get a, you find a different appreciation for it. But when I'm home, that's what I make sure. Like now, when I go visit, whatever they need done, I'm on it before they even ask. So, but I don't mind doing it now because it was all <laughs> taken care of in my younger years. That's so great. And speaking of basketball, I have to ask you, uh, what would have been your dream team to be drafted by in the NBA? Oh, the Chicago Bulls. I was a, a huge Bulls fan. Um, and, you know, Michael Jordan was definitely a huge influence on me as a basketball player and the whole the whole run of the Bulls. But, um, yeah, I was late to learning about Michael Jordan. A little funny story, if you don't mind sharing, if I, I share. But um, my first basketball team, I only went to play on the basketball team when I moved to Nova Scotia because the guys all had these um, varsity jackets. <laughs> so I wanted to be cool. I get to practice, and they're like, can you play? And I'm like, yeah, I can play. And the coach passed me the ball. That's how I learned about who Michael Jordan was. Passed me the ball at the middle of the court. And he's like, well, you got the name. Let's see if you got the game. <laughs> and I was just like, what do I do? So I ran. I threw the ball. I missed everything. And then everyone laughed. And then that day, I decided that I'm not going to, they're not going to laugh at me again. So I, I worked hard. At this, <laughs> But definitely the Bulls, Chicago Bulls. That's very, very good. And um, if you were, uh, is it, like, when it comes to Canadian artists, whether it's pop or R&B, who are you, uh, you know, interested by or would like to collaborate with as a can another Nelly Canadian? Furtado. Nelly Furtado for sure. Um, Jesse Reyes, I love Jesse Reyes. I think she is just phenomenal. Um, I'd say those two for now. Kate Trinado would be dope. Definitely, Kate Trinado would be awesome. It's and that. His vibe, you know, with Amine and the, what they're doing, it's like kind of like the direction I'm going in. So if somebody holla at Kate Chinato over there at MTV. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you ever get starstruck? Uh, yeah, definitely. I remember meeting Clyde Drexler once. Oh, was, that's hot. I was like, yo, oh, we were on a plane going to Dallas, and I was like, Mr. Drexler, how you how you doing? <laughs> Just like I was, I was shaking up because you know that's. You know, you see some guys that you, you look up to and idolize your, your you know, with, with your passion and get to see them. Definitely get starstruck a little bit. You know, you try to keep your cool, but I know you can always tell. <laughs> That's awesome. I love Clyde. He's such a smooth dude. Like he's uh, he's like the, the king of smooth. Um, and uh, I have to ask you, what message do you have for your Montreal fans? Montreal fans, um, thank you for the support. I uh, hope you guys come out and see me when I hit the city. Please listen to the new single, call up radio show, call the Kelly Alexander show. Make sure that you request it and, and dance to it all summer. I want to see you guys moving. Amazing. Jordan, thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, Kelly. That is Canadian artist uh, Jordan. Don't forget that you can follow him on social media at Jordan Music. And of course, check out his new single, What Do I Got To Do? Hey, it's Kelly, and I just want to take a moment to thank you so much for all of the support that you continue to show The Kelly Alexander Show and our latest program, Just Dance, that I co-host with award-winning choreographer Tina Landon. We've been having so much fun on Just Dance, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. We've done interviews with Brian and Scott Nicholson, who work with Ariana Grande, uh, RJ and Nick, who work with Pink and Katy Perry, Luther Brown, who works with our girl Janet Jackson, and the list goes on and on. And we also have many surprises coming for you in this coming year. So please sign up and join us to have lots of fun 
hy.page slash Kelly Alexander Show, our YouTube channel as well, youtube.com slash Kelly Alexander Show, and our newsletter, which is kellyalexandershow.com slash subscribe.